Today I'm going to tell you about the world famous Walt Disney World attraction, Mission Space, and how it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> My name is Austin Searles. This is Aviation Austin. Before I get into the bulk of my video, I really want to give you a disclaimer and say that I am not trashing this ride. I thoroughly enjoy Mission Space. It's one of my favorite attractions of all time. Everything from the theming to the ride mechanics itself, the whole concept, I really enjoy this ride. So I don't want you to think I'm just here to trash Mission Space, because I'm not. I do, however, want to talk about some of the shortcomings of the ride whether they be oversights or whether they took some creative liberties in making the ride a better experience. So for those of you unfamiliar with the premise of this ride, essentially what happens is you are an astronaut candidate. Welcome to the International Space Training Center. You're here today to train for the greatest adventure in the history of mankind, space travel. As you approach the ride queue, you'll notice that there are two separate lines, a green line and an orange line. These are two entirely different experiences, totally different ride mechanics, uh, different videos, and we're going to go into both of those. Today, however, we're going to focus on the green side, which is the less intense experience. Once you make your way through the line, there's a pre-show experience. In this pre-show experience, you warned essentially that those who are made uncomfortable by enclosed dark spaces or simulators should bypass this experience. After you're assigned your individual roles, the doors open again and you are escorted into the motion simulator room. For those of you unfamiliar with what a motion simulator is, essentially what it does is it simulates motion. Duh. So what I mean by that is it uses certain motions to simulate other motions. For instance, on the green side, there are smaller motions such as tilting and turning. These are meant to simulate much greater forces such as the forces that you would feel on liftoff if you were an astronaut. The problem with motion simulators for a lot of people is that it could disorient them and even cause nausea. Essentially why it happens is you're receiving conflicting signals in your brain. Your eyes, which are seeing the video, which in this case is an orbit around the Earth, are telling you that, hey, I'm blasting off into the air, going straight up. But your ears are telling you, hey, no dummy, you're on the Earth and you're just tilting. So when you get these conflicting signals, oftentimes this can lead to disorientation and even sickness. The door closes and then you're tilted back into the position as if you're ready for a launch. In the video, you are then launched into orbit, and here is where I start to find some scientific inaccuracy. In the early days of NASA, they were looking for a location that they could launch rockets from. The ideal location they decided upon ultimately was Cape Canaveral. There's a lot of different reasons for this. One of the main reasons is that it's right on the coast and they can launch over the water away from densely populated cities. However, in this ride, you are launched over the water, but then somehow you come back, take a 180, and fly right back over Florida. This doesn't make a lot of sense because NASA specifically launches you the other way over the water to avoid things like this. If you ever want to launch in the other direction, west, then there's a separate launch facility for that over in California. So it wouldn't really make sense for you to launch straight up east, turn around, head west, because you've lost all the momentum and you just have to turn right back around and head west. It's implausible and would take probably more than twice the fuel to do that. After we fly over America, we take a sharp right turn over Japan and then northern China, over Mongolia, and somehow down towards the Nile at one point. So you're taking turns and it just doesn't work like that in orbital mechanics. There's a big difference between flying in space and flying as we know in airplanes. In a future video I'm going to talk more about how flying in the air is different than flying in space, but just know for now essentially you can't make a sharp left and right turn in space. It just doesn't work. A normal orbital trajectory looks something more like this. 
and not like whatever the nonsense this is. Flight path will take you west across North America, Asia, Europe, and back home to Florida. You're gonna love it. So to be fair, I realize that originally this ride did not feature two different sides, a less and more intense experience. It only featured the more intense experience. So the green side is kind of an afterthought. So I don't want to get too much down on them. It's a fantastic ride, like I said earlier. I realized they probably just wanted to fly over a lot of known locations so we could look at the Nile and Paris and all that things just to make it look pretty and a aesthetically pleasing experience. So my overall impressions for the ride is it's a nice little experience for those of you who are made sick easily by motion simulators or they don't like roller coasters because it makes them feel a little queasy. This is a much less intense experience for those kind of people. So in my next video I'm going to talk about the vastly superior orange side. I'm going to break down the mechanics of the ride, how it works, the origins essentially, how the Imagineers came up with a scenario like this, and how it fits all together. If there's anything else you guys want me to react to, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what I should do next. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. There's more on the way. Thanks for watching, guys, and Godspeed.